Hey, what's going on guys? Daniel from ModBot here, and today we are going to be reviewing this guy right here. This is the AlphaWise U30, which is a 3D printer that I've been testing pretty heavily over the past probably three or four weeks here, and uh, I feel like it's finally time to give you guys a review, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So, this machine goes for roughly around 200 US dollars. Um, it's not uncommon to find it for about 180 US dollars. And I think I've even seen it as low as 170 uh, from Gearbest on a flash sale. And I hadn't seen a whole lot of info on this machine. I've seen a lot more info on the AlphaWise U10 and the U20, which I previously reviewed, which is in the middle of a Frankensteining uh, conversion to a different setup completely. But I hadn't seen a whole lot on this machine. And at the price point and with the things I saw on paper as far as specs go and it being kind of right in line with that whole Creality Ender 3 uh, form factor and using very similar gantry ses, uh, system as well as extrusion system, I was certainly interested. So I reached out to Gearbest, asked if they would be interested in having me review this unit and uh, they inclined and sent me the AlphaWise U30. So a quick rundown of some of the features that, uh, again, are just a lot like the Ender 3, but some things that aren't as well is uh, the build volume, which on this guy is 220 by 220 by 250, uh, which should be pretty much right on line with the Ender 3. I think the Ender 3 might be slightly different by about one inch or so, but it's very, very similar as far as the form factor goes. Um, one thing I liked right away that the Ender 3 did not have was that there is a glass build plate. Um, it still has the aluminum just like Ender 3 does. You still get that kind of knockoff build tack material. Um, but when that is destroyed, you've got the glass, which is really nice because I ran into an issue over time where my Ender 3, the aluminum bed started to slowly bow in the middle. So I ended up having to get a piece of glass for that machine uh, anyways, regardless. So it's nice that this, at least you've already got the piece of glass because I would assume with a lot of these printers, they're constructed fairly similarly that there's a chance over time that that could have potentially happened to this machine. And by having that pane of glass, it kind of already counters out the uh, possibility of that being an issue. Another thing that this machine had over the uh, Creality Ender 3 was the touchscreen, which to me is not a huge deal, but certainly to some people they prefer having a touchscreen versus the uh, more traditional just LCD with the dial. Um, and the other thing that this machine had that I thought was kind of neat that the Ender 3 did not have was a filament runout sensor. Um, it also has power resume, which I know the Ender 3 uh, has as well, but the filament runout sensor was another thing that I thought was pretty neat. Um, on this machine, the power supply is mounted under the 3D printer, which I like. It's completely out of the way, and the mains are fully covered. There's a fuse and a switch on the back of the machine. Um, you've got a USB port on the back, as well as a micro SD card slot. Um, this is a 24 volt system as well, so the heat up times on the uh, heated bed are pretty damn quick, which is really nice. Um, I definitely prefer 24 volt systems over uh, 12 volt systems. So. Um, one other small thing that I'd like to point out that I did really like about this machine, and this is kind of different than normal. When I normally do a 3D printer review, I have like a, I start with the initial receiving and the printing, but for this one, I'm jumping over a bit. Um, the micro SD card, which I know again, the Ender 3 does have a, a micro SD card slot in the front. I don't like the placement per se because the board is underneath on the back. You have to go behind the printer to plug it in. But what I do like is that the actual housing that houses the board is much tighter than the Ender 3s. Um, I had an issue one time where I was trying to, it was pretty late, but I was trying to put the micro SD card into the Ender 3 to print something from the LCD screen. And the micro SD card, I thought I had it in the slot, but it actually slid into the inside of the case. So I had to open up or wiggle around to get the micro SD card to pop out. And it's happened before in other 3D printers. Um, on this one, it doesn't feel like that's even a possibility because of how tight the tolerances are machined on this housing. There's only room for the micro SD card to slide in and there's no excess slop on the top or bottom of that, which again is a small thing, but maybe some of you guys have experienced that as well where the SD card uh, or micro SD card just kind of slides into the case of the 3D printer, then you've got to you know unscrew it to get it out. It's kind of a pain in the ass. So um, anyways, let's talk a little bit about my experience with this printer so far. Uh, this machine showed up in a much larger box than I initially anticipated. Um, it was very well packaged with very large uh, foam inserts separating everything. There was no scratches on the uh, anodized aluminum extrusions and everything was looking great. There was a printout of the instructions on how to assemble. Um, I was able to assemble it in about an hour, roughly. 
I will say that the instructions for this machine could have been a little bit better. It's pretty simplistic enough to where by looking at it, you should be able to figure it out more than likely. And I certainly was able to, again, get the whole thing up and assembled in an hour. But there were certain parts where it was a little bit difficult to tell which screw size was going into where. Um, and just, I, I think that with a little bit more, instead of just having photos on the instructions that they had a little bit more like couple of words here and there, just saying like, this is the screw you're using. Um, it would certainly eliminate some of the uh, potential head scratching that you might run into. But again, compared to a lot of the other instructions I've seen, it's definitely not bad. It's fairly decent, if you will. But I still think that there's these little things that you could they could tweak potentially to just make this a lot uh, a lot better for, you know, a user that's never built a 3D printer. And luckily it's a, you know, mostly assembled kit. So it's, you know, it comes in major parts, but still just to, uh, the more, more information is better than less information in my opinion when building uh, a 3D printer, whether it's a semi-assembled or a fully assembled or a full kit. So anyways, in about an hour, I had this guy up and uh, up and assembled. I went ahead and leveled the bed very quickly and I started a print with this purple uh, Matter Hackers build series PLA. It was a pretty big bust of, um, nope, not Gandalf, not Hagrid, Dumbledore. That is the wizard. Um, it was a pretty big bust of Dumbledore that I had uh, found on, I think it was my mini factory and it started printing. It looked fine. I was running around doing some errands that day. I think I was also working on some other printer projects and it looked good, everything was going good, and then maybe halfway through the print, which was probably about four hours in, the part came loose from the bed, and it was pretty irritated. Normally, this build tack stuff that they send you sticks almost too good, so I really wasn't anticipating having issues with bed adhesion, um, but when I took the um, you know floating around part, looked at the bottom of it, I clearly saw that the nozzle had been pretty far away from the bed, so um, I will... Uh, take full responsibility for that and basically assume that I didn't quite level the bed as good as I thought that I had so I went ahead and adjusted it again and this time I was certain that I had leveling um, you know well and I went ahead and printed out a uh, PLA Groot or baby Groot uh, which turned out absolutely amazing it was a little interesting though Kira said that the print was going to be eight hours long and the machine actually took about double that which I know sometimes there's some conflict of time from slicer to time of actual printing um, but that was quite a large gap so I'm not really sure what caused that but the print did at least turn out absolutely beautiful um, I'll show you guys overlays of all the prints I'm talking about here uh, so I printed out Groot when that was done I found this kind of spiral staircase castle similar to something I printed out a long time ago on the JG Aurora A5 and I printed that out in PLA. Uh, on this one the time of Kira and the time of the part was much more in sync so again I don't know what the uh, issue was between the first two. So then I, I swapped this out for uh, gold, uh, gold PLA and I printed out a dragon. I can't remember the name of the dragon off the top of my head but I will put it in the video. It's a very known dragon most people in the community at one point or another have printed this dragon out um so when you see a photo you'll probably or a video you'll be like oh it's you know so and so's dragon but um overall that turned out really really well um so when i was done with those three things i basically in my head was thinking okay like it's it does a pretty damn good job of printing in pla um it's got a it's not an all metal hot end, so it's, it only goes up to roughly 250. I think they say 260, but I wouldn't really push it much past 250. Um, and it does have a layer cooling fan, which seems to do a pretty damn good, uh, at least adequate job of keeping the uh, filament really cool when it does come out for PLA printing. Uh, so once I was done with those PLA prints, I then wanted to do some PETG. So I threw on, again, some Matter Hackers build series. This was their black PETG, and I started to print a uh, rocket and the rocket turned out pretty good uh, with a little bit a little bit of uh, artifacts on the print there was some definite uh, stringing issues um, there was a little bit of roughness and also on the very tip of the nozzle it just started at the very very end started to look just pretty bad um, which again I don't really in that situation think it was a machine thing but more of a slicer settings and potentially the filament um, so I went ahead and adjusted the retraction I changed up the temperature by 5 celsius I lowered it actually and I slowed down the print uh, just a hair and I went ahead and printed out a vase in the same material well something happened with that and my raspberry pi running octoprint crashed like halfway through it and uh basically wiped it out and so 
I was a little bit sad when I saw that and I went ahead and swapped over to some green pet G and I restarted that print and the print in, in base mode, the print just turned out absolutely awesome. Um, there was like no hairs at all. The lines, um, all of the layer lines were had very really good um, layer adhesion, which was awesome. And I was really, really pleased with the end results of the PETG printing, which PLA and PETG make up, I'd say, 99% of my 3D printing. So uh, I was very pleased that it was able to handle those without any issues at all. Uh, the last thing I did want to try out was a little bit of TPU. I've been experimenting with a little bit of TPUs lately. I don't have a whole lot of them. The main one I'm running is a uh, Sane Smart from probably two years ago that's never been dry. So it's a terrible, um, terrible choice to print. Uh, but I've just been wanting to see like what the printers are capable of doing with this really old, nasty filament. And um, I was able to print out a little bracelet, uh, but it was very, very messy. And I would say that overall it was a fail of a print. And I also tried printing out Matter Hacker's 3D fill um, with this TPU uh, from Saint Smart, and it also was a big failure. So I would say in its default form, the extruder is not definitely not set up to be able to do flexibles. Um, I do think that with a slight modification and certainly with an extruder upgrade, you can definitely get away. Like the bone tube length is really short. I was running into issues um, around the uh, basically the bearing and the gear here where no matter how slow I was going, even if I got it starting up correctly, at some point or another, it would slowly start to um, uh, curl a little bit and then it would just cause a jam. And it, I, I gave it about three or four goes before I just kind of said, you know, I wanted to see what it's capable of doing completely stock and not have to modify anything. So all in all, this machine definitely is going to be going up on my shelf next to the Ender 3. Um, to me, it was able to perform as well as my Ender 3 did, um, which is awesome because I love my Ender 3. Um, the main downside or downsides I would say about this 3D printer um, compared to the Ender 3, I suppose at least, is uh, the adjusted screws on the bottom are not nearly as uh, large as the Ender 3. So they're, they're large enough to where it's easy to adjust with your hand, but I really have gotten used to those nice big adjustment wheels on the bed that Creality has been using on their later latest machines. Um, so that's kind of one thing. The other thing was the instructions, again, I think could be a little bit better. And really, aside from that, the only other thing is that the fan is definitely not super, super quiet, um, which you could easily adjust by just throwing in like a Noctua fan or something like that. But I at least have to let that be known but aside from that this machine does a lot of things that i really really like and think that you know if you've already gotten ender 3 or if you're on the fence uh about purchasing a machine like an ender 3 and there's so many kind of ender 3-esque clones um this is certainly one to consider with having the glass bed already installed and the um, filament runout sensor as well as the touch screen um, i think that this is a pretty awesome machine and i definitely think that alpha wise did a solid job of um, not only, again, making something that is comparable to the Ender 3, but kind of adding their own flavor on top of that with their few other additional features. So uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you have any other questions that I didn't cover about this machine, I'm more than happy to help you out or, or to, uh, you know, answer any questions. Uh, it does use the same kind of hot end, so you should be able to throw in like an all metal micro Swiss without having to modify anything whatsoever. Um, and I will also place links in the description to where you guys can find out more about the uh, AlphaWise U30 or purchase one for yourself. And uh, yeah, on that note, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys all had an awesome week and are having a great weekend so far. And I will see you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.